Hey everyone, welcome to another time-lapse sketching video. So I've just came back from the Asia Link sketch walk that was held in Kuching a few weeks ago and I took a lot of reference photographs and in today's video I will be sketching with the help of a reference photograph. And if you want to practice, you can actually find the link to that reference photograph in the video description just right below. And as usual, this time lapse is actually created from a full length tutorial that I have made specially for my patron supporters. So if you want to support my work and my YouTube channel, you can support me on Patreon. And for your support, you will have access to all the full length tutorials that I have created over the last two years. Instead of the Pelican M200 fountain pen, today I'm using the Duke fountain pen, the Duke 209, the one with the Fude nib, because I wanted to um, try something different and also because I haven't used this pen for a very long time. So this is a pretty nice pen to draw, it can create thin and thick lines. Now for this particular sketch, I start by sketching the building on the left side first and then work my way from the left to the right. So the building on the left side is actually much higher, much taller compared to the building on the right side. And if I can fit the building on the left, that means I can definitely fit the shorter buildings on the right. That is why I start by drawing the larger uh, building on the left first. So I draw the bigger ships first and then fill in the little details it's really much easier to draw the big shapes first than fill in the little details. If you were to draw little details first, like um, just branch out from a little uh, branch out from drawing little details, sometimes, or at least for me, when I do that, I find that I tend to run out of space on the page. So I try to draw the big shapes first and then fill in the little details inside. And when I run out of space to draw the details. I just leave them out. So that's how I am able to simplify my sketch. Now this street scene, this is actually Carpenter Street in Kuching. It has a lot of beautiful shop houses and it's a rather long street and you can probably just walk every 5 meters and there is just something for you to draw. I really love old street scenes like this. These are definitely more interesting compared to uh, modern buildings, modern skyscrapers, where the shapes are usually just rectangular. But for street scenes like this, these shop houses, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are protrusions here and there. There are so many signboards. There are corridors. There are cars parked along the streets. There are people crossing the roads. There is just so much activity and this is what I really like about sketching uh, those older places versus newer, uh, newer architecture or newer cities. So this sketch is almost completed and now I'm drawing the lines that are used to hang the lanterns. Before I color this sketch, I have created a color wheel using these three colors Monte Amiata, Natural Sienna, Organic Vermilion, and Indentron Blue. So I'm using a rather muted limited palette today. This palette is not able to create really bright greens. Even the purples, they are a bit subdued. Bright oranges are uh, alright. I can get really bright uh, oranges from organic vermilion and sienna but as for the other colors they are really muted the color palette that you use goes a long way to creating the mood so for this particular color palette which is very subdued it creates a very moody feeling this photograph was taken after the rain so the sky is still quite cloudy quite moody and I think this color palette is a nice choice. Of course if you want a bright and cheery look you can choose other color palettes like for example lemon yellow, phthalo blue, permanent alizari crimson 
the look and feel of that palette versus the palette that I'm using right now it's going to be very different and that's the fun when it comes to exploring different uh, color palettes I used to have certain favorite colors but nowadays I have dropped the idea of having a certain favorite color a certain favorite palette because as I experiment more with colors I realized that there is really no perfect color palette and as I try different colors different combinations the combinations they somehow they always sort of surprise me like I, it's like when you are cooking with certain ingredients there are so many different ways you can cook a certain dish and the flavor is going to be different each time you use a different ingredient I think that applies with watercolor as well and you get of course to learn a lot more about the pins that you have the characteristics like whether this color mixed with another color will give you a bright secondary or a very dull secondary and all those are actually quite useful in uh, helping you learn more about color theory I have just finished adding the dark shadows this gives the sketch that extra contrast if everything is just grey, there's no contrast, it's very difficult for the person who's looking at the sketch to um, look at the details, to focus their eyes, because everything is just so grey and nothing stands out. So having contrast, whether it's by value, for example light versus dark, or by a color change, for example vibrant versus dull, you can get the viewer's attention. Oh yes, when you are drawing from reference photo, always bear in mind the distortion that is created by the camera lens. For example, this building on the left side that I have drawn, the vertical lines, they are actually really vertical, straight down from top to bottom. But if you look at my reference photo, that vertical line is actually tilted. So that's uh, the difference between drawing on location versus drawing with the help of a reference photo. Alright, this sketch is slowly coming to life. I have just made the roots a bit darker because I feel that I need more contrast on the road. Here's a closer look at all the little details. So for the railings on this um, third or fourth floor, I was trying to use the Derwent graphic line painter but the ink is not opaque enough. You can see that I used the white gel pen for the lines that is hanging the lanterns. That one contrasts very nicely against the dark background, but the orange paint from the Derwent line painter it doesn't uh, it doesn't work that well because it's not opaque enough. And here's a close up at the background at all the elements that are further back. It's very difficult to draw things that are in the background because it's very difficult for me to see the actual details and for the lanterns I basically just added them using the watercolor brushes by adding uh, dots of red across the sketch. So that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, do feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to watch the full-length tutorial, you can support me on Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to help out the creator that you like. Now this video is also going to be available in one of my sketching tutorial sets that is sold on Gumroad. It's not out yet, but it should be out very soon. So that's another way where you can uh, watch the tutorial if you do not like the idea of Patreon. So that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.